I'm Michael Mesa, curator of birds, and I'm obviously not at the St. Louis Zoo. I'm in Punta San Juan, Peru, the home of the Wild Care Institute's Center for the Conservation of the Humboldt Penguin. The main reason we're here today is to um, work on the health assessment. And about three years ago, Mike Atkinson, who used to be associated with the St. Louis Zoo, is now working at one of our main partners, the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago. He instituted a health assessment of initially the humble penguins here at, at Punta San Juan. And that was, of course, through the Wild Care Institute and the Center for the Conservation of Humble Penguins. Um, he's since been back one other time for humble penguins and now is, in fact, sort of expanding it to include the pelicans and the cormorants who live here in close association with the humble penguins. That makes perfect sense. And Another new thing we're doing this year is looking at poultry because there are a lot of domestic poultry production farms along the coast of Peru and they're literally right on the beach. So obviously these big uh, factory operations can have a really big impact on animals and marine systems, not just the penguins but everything because a lot of things are going to be leached into the ocean. So that is first and foremost why we're here right now. We hope to get another hundred samples on the humble penguins and then get some uh, samples on the poultry as well. There are a variety of other potential environmental threats on the horizon. One is the expansion of the natural gas line. And there is natural gas, of course, they've always had an exploited natural gas here, here in Peru, but it's really growing now. Um, and there is a plant just a few hours away from here, and there is a gas line that comes very close to Punta San Juan. In addition, there's the Trans-American Highway that is going to be expanded coming very close to Peru. And of course, with all of that sort of activity comes additional potential for more environmental contaminants, as well as more people. Where there's, you know, more factories, where there's a port, where there's a highway, more people and more potential for impact on, on marine ecosystems. And we're trying to figure out what sorts of contaminants, what sorts of diseases, what sorts of ecto and endoparasites exist in the population right now. So what's the baseline? How does that change over years? So we're, we're married to this project. We'll be coming back at least every, if not every other year, pro well, probably every year and perhaps every other year as we kind of really start to go 10, 15 years down the road. But at the moment, we really need a large data set to get a baseline. And then we'll watch these things as time goes on and we'll be able to kind of tell what's new, what's, what's a potential threat that can help conservationists develop strategies for those sorts of things. We are on the desert coast. Uh, the land is barren like a moonscape, yet when it reaches the coast, um, there's this incredible explosion of life. And that's because of these cold ocean currents coming up from Antarctica. And cold water generally supports a larger diversity of sea life. And because of the sea life, we have the sea lions and the penguins and the Inca terns. And, um, but it's the concentration of, of all those things together in such a small spot that for me is just almost um, emotionally and um, mentally overwhelming, but it kind of gives me a high that I can't get <laughs> in a lot of different places.